Welcome back. Today's a quick shot video. I finally nailed the settings for clear cast acrylic on the Thunder Laser Bolt. Today on Laser Nug. Being a quick shot video, I'm going to give you my settings first. And in the last part of this video, I'm going to go through some of the things I learned, especially some pretty important tips for dealing with acrylic. So let's get to the settings. So I'm going to give you two sets of settings <laughs> and it's for one eighth inch clear cast acrylic. I'm going to give you an engraved setting for what I would consider is a less frosty, but nice consistent engrave. And then I'm going to give you another set of settings, which will give you a much whiter, more frostier looking engrave, still nice, consistent engrave quality. And then I'm going to give you the cut settings for the 1 8 inch cast acrylic. So for your, what I'd call less frosty, but beautiful, 400 millimeters per second, 25% power max, 25% power min, 500 DPI, or excuse me, 500 lines per inch. And you want to do that in two passes and you want to make sure you mask the acrylic. For a whiter, more frostier look, you want to set it at 400 millimeters per second, 40% max and min power, and drop your lines per inch to 400. Again, two passes, and you want to make sure the material is masked. And the cut settings for both, for 1 8 inch acrylic, 12 millimeters per second, 75% min and max power, one pass, and you want to make sure, of course, that it's masked. Check them out. Let me know what you think of the settings. And if you have any suggestions or you find something else works better on your bolt, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Let's get to part two of the video. Tips and learnings. <laughs> so I'll tell you, I thought working with the Romark and trying to get those settings was tough. This was pretty much on par, but I got them. Acrylic, interesting material to work with. It's absolutely beautiful stuff but it's very, very sensitive. For reference, I used a one and a half inch lens on this bolt. I actually, like many other materials, tried the two and a half inch, but definitely need a different uh, group of settings if you're gonna use a two and a half. But let's talk about a couple of the tips or a couple of the important things that I learned about dealing with acrylic. Number one, acrylic is really sensitive. It scratches very, very easily. So whether it comes to trying to clean up what appears to be residue, you as much as look at it the wrong way and you'll scratch it. It is very sensitive to scratch. So you've got to be super careful. And that's why I ended up with settings where I began using mask, as well as I left that paper coating that it comes with on the back. And that way both surfaces are kept clean and free of residue, free of any opportunity for me to scratch it with a sponge or any other type of cleanser. Second big thing, acrylic gives off, um, for lack of better words, toxic fumes. I was pleasantly surprised through all the testing over the last number of days, I did not once smell any of those fumes here in the garage. The Bolt's exhaust system seems to work excellently. Sucked it all out the window and outside. And after a couple of days, I was thinking, am I breathing in those toxic fumes and I just can't smell it? because most of the videos that you watch on acrylic will tell you there's a really odd smell. So I had my mask at the ready, just in case. Never smelled a thing in the garage until yesterday, I walked outside to say goodbye to my daughter on her way to work, and then I smelled it, because it was all going out the vent through this window, and I wasn't thinking, I walked right by the window, and I immediately caught the scent, or the smell, or the odor that people were referring to. So I know I was in good shape here in the garage. The next thing, if your supplier provides you both sides with a protective, almost a paper-like layer, leave it on the back because when you're sliding it into your bolt, again, it scratches super easy and you don't want an open or exposed side being scratched across the honeycomb. Plus the settings I gave you will work just fine if you leave it on. Next, you're gonna need a pick or something similar to this, just like you would using mask on anything else. And it's very helpful if you have a pair of tweezers. And lastly, I might have mentioned this before in the video, it's easy to scratch or to mar the finish on the acrylic. So especially if you're doing it for a product you're providing out to a customer, it's best to wear gloves. 
so that you don't get your oily fingerprints all over it. And I know you could clean it, but whenever you clean it, you may smudge or find smear marks because the acrylic, of course, is clear. And you can see everything, especially when you hold it up to the light. The other thing the mask is going to save you from is some of the videos where you'll see people will suggest to you that you need to spray it down with WD-40 or you need to take liquid dish soap and rub or smear that liquid dish soap on the front. The reason why they're suggesting you need to do that is because when you're engraving acrylic, unlike many of the other materials I've worked with, the acrylic almost kind of the residue almost sticks to the acrylic. That fine dust, and I'm not sure if you can see it in the light, it's very, very difficult to get off. And in fact, as you can see, I still haven't been able to get that off. And I was scrubbing at these things for quite a while before I finally decided it was time to get my mask out. The mask works great. You'll have no residue, no cleanup, and you're not going to find yourself with all of this residue, which is almost melted, it seems, to the top of the acrylic. These settings I provided you, especially using mask, means that you will have zero cleanup. No cleanup at all. You don't need a magic eraser, uh, power wash, LA Awesome, uh, any type of acrylic cleaner, water and soap. No need whatsoever. The next point I noticed through all this testing, and I'm not going to try to show it to you because I doubt very much you can see it in the camera, but if your settings are off, whether you're out of balance as per your speed and your power or your LPI, you're going to find that sometimes your engrave is very uh, rough. You're looking at it, you can see that it's kind of frosted, but when you look at it, even without the microscope, you can see very clearly that it's uneven and you can literally see the grooves. And I'm not talking about banding because it's not a banding issue. During the testing, I also tried with different numbers of passes as well as trying the crosshatch on the engrave. And that never worked out well because it, for some reason, left lines one or two here or there. But the common principle that I learned throughout this testing was that the lower lines per inch you use, the more of a white, frostier look you're going to get to the engrave on this acrylic, the higher lines per inch you use on your settings the more of a more transparent, less white, beautiful engrave, but it's not as uh, frosty. So if you're looking for a nice clean engrave that's smooth and consistent, you can use a really high LPI, right? Because the bolt will go right up to 2000, but you're not gonna get that white frosty look. You're gonna get more of a transparent frosty look. So bottom line, lower DPI or lower LPI will give you more frosty, higher LPI will give you more transparent frosty, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> I also chose to mirror the image. So in other words, what you see here, this is actually, in theory, the back of the acrylic. I engraved it on this side. And I'm not sure how well you're gonna see that. The reason I chose this good old cabin in the woods is because there's so much detail in it. And it was my final test after I tested a number of different shapes or designs that were a little simpler. I figured the ultimate test was, could I engrave something that had a lot of detail and still see a beautiful, consistent frosting across it all? And I think the results speak for themselves. So on that note, I'm going to walk through just a very simple logo engrave for those of you that want to stick around. And so you can see my process or my steps. If not, Thanks for sticking around for the video so far. Let me know what you think of those settings. Okay, here in Lightburn, I've just got a simple logo, much simpler than the cabin. I'm gonna set this with my black or my engraved layer to match my more white frostier one that I provided you guys the settings. And that's here, 400, 40 and 40, 400 DPI or lines per inch rather, and two passes. I don't use air, as you can see, and my line is going to be at 12 millimeters per second, 75 and 75 for power. I'm going to have this on high air. I know that there's a number of videos that have suggested to get a cleaner cut on acrylic, you have to not only slow it down as far as speed, but you need to reduce and only use minimal air 
or much less air pressure. I've left mine on high air and maybe it's just because it's only one eighth inch thick. I also did not adjust the manual adjustment that sits on the X gantry behind the, the laser head. I've left that as high as I would normally use it for any other type of cut on any other material. I've got one pass there because that's all we need. If you haven't used this function yet, if you come straight up to the top of your toolbar, you'll see these little triangles. And if you click the second one, it says that it mirrors the selection horizontally, you'll see that the logo itself will flip backwards. Here we go. And I've used that command because that way you're looking through the acrylic and the engrave ends up being on the back of the acrylic instead of on the front. Okay, so my settings are good. I'll highlight that. I'm grouped. I am going to come down here. I'm on user origin down on the bottom right here. And as always, I usually put my origin to the top left. I tend to like it there. I have my settings ready. Let's send it to the bolt. I have my acrylic. You'll notice on the back, I've left that paper protection. And you can see here, we're gonna be engraving in this top corner. I've put mask on the top as well. Okay. I'm just gonna square it up against that X gantry line here, because I noticed that this piece is not square. Bring the laser over. I'm gonna to wanna to cut somewhere in here. I'm going to set this as my origin. I'm going to frame it. Yep, lots of room. And I want to autofocus. Let's engrave it. Okay, let's clean this up, shall we? I'd highly recommend, because of how sensitive this acrylic is, that when you're using the pick tool, use it very carefully and try to use more of the side or the rounded part of it once you try to get a piece so that you don't scratch it. I know that a few folks realize this can be sometimes a tedious process, but it is far easier in my mind and far cleaner than trying to clean that residue off that ends up melting to the top of the acrylic. So hey, that's a wrap. I'm pretty happy with the settings. I hope you folks give them a shot and they work out well for you. Thanks so much for hanging around with me again today. Have a great week. Please be kind to one another and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers.